Welcome to a mostly Mopar family. Today, I'd like to introduce you to my latest project that I just dragged home. I'm really excited to dig into this car and to share it with you because it's a 1971 Cuda, a real deal 71 Cuda that originally had a 383 big block engine and a 727 automatic transmission. The original engine is long gone. Nobody knows what happened to it, but the original transmission is still in the car. It is so rare and hard to find a 1971 Cuda or Barracuda in any condition. If you've been looking for one in the last 20 years, you know what I'm talking about. To give you a frame of reference, in the last 15 years that I've been looking for and buying Mopars, I've come across dozens of Chargers, Challengers, Roadrunners, and Coronets. But this is the very first, the only 1971 Cuda that I've had a chance to look at in person and try to make a deal on. I first found this 1971 Cuda almost four years ago. At the time, I had just purchased a Burgundy 1968 Dodge Charger, and I was searching for its numbers matching 383 engine. The guy that I bought the 1968 Dodge Charger from had owned it for almost 10 years. He thought that the previous owner might still have its numbers matching 383 engine, so he gave me the previous owner's name and number. After several phone calls, we were able to schedule a time to meet up and take a look. Shortly after meeting up, we walked into his Morton building and right up to the Plymouth satellite that supposedly held the numbers matching 383 to my charger. I crawled up in the engine bay and using a pocket knife and a wire brush, I cleaned off the back radius of the block lip and sure enough, there was the VIN number for my charger. After verifying the engine, I crawled out of the engine bay and we talked Mopars for quite a while. He was from a huge Mopar family and had some really cool family stories. At some point, he walked me to the back corner of his Morton building and my jaw just about hit the ground. There in the corner sat a 1971 Cuda, and right next to it was a 1970 Big Block Barracuda. From the moment I saw it, I was in love. This thing looked so cool, and even in its present state, all I could think about was how cool it would be to own this car. As I looked it over, all I could see was the potential. It had a lot of rust and a lot of dents, but that didn't bother me. It was apparent that this Cuda had had a run-in with something large and heavy, which had scraped the entire right side of the vehicle. I fully expected the grill to be missing, but as I came around to the front of the car, I was shocked to see that it was there and in good condition. As I came around to the driver's side window, I was very surprised to find a full set of interior. Most of the cars I find have been completely picked clean. This thing looked just mean. It looked like it would be such a fun project. And as I crawled around it, yeah, it looked really rough and it needs a lot. However, the bones to it are really good. The front frame rails and torsion bar cross member are exceptionally solid. The rockers also very solid. The rear frame rails are pretty good. There's a couple soft spots that we're gonna need some patches to fix. I was really excited, but I was trying to play it cool. So I asked him what his plans were for the Cuda. What he said shocked me. His dad had bought this car several decades before and the original plan was to use it as a parts car. Fortunately, they hadn't gotten around to it, nothing had happened, and it has just been sitting all these years. I asked him if he'd sell the Cuda, but he didn't have any interest in parting ways with it, so I left that day at least happy to have found the numbers matching engine to my charger. For the next three and a half years, I checked in with him periodically, but each time I did, his answer was the same. Finally, a few weeks ago, I was able to find something that he really wanted, and we were able to make a trade. I just got this beast home, and am starting to really formulate a plan on how to attack this project. It's still hard to believe that this car was destined to be a parts car, but 30 years ago, these cars didn't have the value that they do today, and we didn't have the aftermarket support and reproduction sheet metal that we do today either. As we do a walk around on this 71 Cuda, you can kind of understand why the previous owners thought this was a parts car 30 years ago. Not only is the entire right side of the car damaged, but the roof skin is also atrocious. The vinyl top really did a number on that roof skin and it's going to need to be replaced. Ultimately, I'm just glad that this Cuda has been inside for at least the last 20 years, which greatly helped preserve the metal that was left. It could have been much worse. I'm not just gonna show you the good side here. I'm also gonna show you the warts, the blemishes, and the issues that need to be resolved. Let's take a look. Here she is, the 1971 Cuda. We'll start our tour at the front end. As discussed, I'm still very pleased and surprised with the condition of that grill. 
The front bumper is also really straight and obviously never been in any accidents. The front valance, really pretty solid. You can tell that it's been pushed in there due to a impact on that right front fender, but it can certainly be straightened. The driver's side fender, including the gills, is in really nice shape. Oftentimes, the dog leg will hold debris and leaves and rust out, but this one's in really good condition. Fortunately, there aren't any surprises on this driver's side inner fender or frame rail. They're just what you'd hope to see. The driver's side door is solid as can be, and that driver's side quarter panel is even pretty good in that dog leg. Again, this is original paint, so it's not hiding anything. Obviously, I've got some really good sized dents there, and if I capture those from the right angle, you can see that that's a pretty significant dent. Here's the driver's side rocker, which is in really good shape. The floor in that Morton building was gravel and dirt, so it had the opportunity to soak up some moisture. So I'm really pleased with how well this hung in there. The torque box and the torsion bar crossmember are also really solid. Somehow this driver's side quarter panel took a pretty good hit from above. And this deck lid has a fair amount of scale on it. The tail panel itself is really pretty straight. You can see it's missing a trim piece along the bottom edge. And that left tail light is going to need replaced. That bumper is probably going to need to be replaced too. Not sure the history here. Maybe it was towed or winched on there on the corner, but it's bent pretty good. The rear valance with cutouts is pretty solid. It'll need a little straightening, but it's a lot better than most of my come across. And now the bad side. This is the side that, uh, wow. I mean, I'm not sure what happened here, but... Let me give you a few different angles on it. That quarter panel is almost flat instead of being slab sided. It's crunched in pretty good right behind the door. Gaps pretty goofed up. You can see the supports in the door that are still sticking out, but the skin is pushed in around the supports and the leading edge of this door. Oof, man. That's rough to look at, but I, I'm not sure what we'll do there. I'll probably have to find a, a replacement door. We'll see if we can find one with some patina that maybe matches. Uh, I'm not holding my breath. But this fender, this fender is really pretty good. It is creased a little bit there, but I think with some hammer and dolly work, I think we'll be able to work that out and it'll look pretty good. A little bit of a, another nice little hair lip there or a dent. And it's a little boogered up down here. So we've got our work cut out for us on this front fender as well. However, the inner fenders also are really, really solid. I'm really happy with this. The undercoating really did its job well. And obviously this car was not driven in a really salty environment. The passenger side rocker is in similar condition to the driver's side without any real suspect areas. And the torsion bar cross member and torque box are also looking really good. Coming around to the engine bay, you can see that the air conditioning lines and condenser are still present. The inner fenders, although dirty, are really in good condition. Firewall is also in good condition. My other 1970 had some rust issues on that firewall, but this one appears to be really quite solid. You can see the hood pins still in place. And the original hood is there and really in good condition. The paint fared on the hood much better than it did on the rest of the car. One of the neatest things about this car is the full fender tag, all those options Really, really cool. It's obviously never been removed before. Now I'll show you the other really poor area on this car, and that's the roof skin. This vinyl top, man, really did a number on this roof. I mean, I haven't seen a roof skin this bad in a really long time. Oh well, it's just part of it. The rear window corners look decent, but I know better. I've worked on enough B and E bodies to know that once that trim comes out, I promise you, 
that channel is going to be disgusting and it's going to need a lot of work. You can see some perforations there along the top trim. But coming around, I mean, the seats are there. I uh, pulled out all the carpets. They're, you know, the floors are, I've seen worse. But they've got holes, obviously. The back seat is in much worse shape, that, that floor area. Look at that. There you go. So, as you can see, those floors are just toast. They need replaced, and they will be. What's crazy is how nicely this door closes. I had a local locksmith come out. I borrowed his master set of keys, and after trying like a hundred keys, I still couldn't find a match for the trunk latch. I'm basically gonna reach through the rear seat area with a really long extension, pull out the two bolts that hold the latch, and then we can finally get a look and see what kind of shape that trunk is in. Is that long enough for you? Well, my plan didn't work out this time. The nut plate on this right bolt right back here broke off so this bolt just spun. So I had to cut a hole in the trunk and cut the head off that bolt so I could undo the latch. We're pulling the gas tank. What a nasty job. The carnage gets even worse. Man, if you like to be clean, you probably shouldn't work on these old e-bodies. I'm back out in the garage, doing a little cleanup, and I finally got the trunk open on the Cuda. This is one of those moments where I, I hope I'm gonna find some box of cash or, or some, something else that's uh, really valuable, but no such luck. In fact, Things are a little worse than I had hoped. The floor pan was just barely hanging together along the edges, so I helped it out and cut out a big hole so I could get in and get access to the latch here. As you can see, that floor is just roached. Um, we're gonna rip it out completely. Frame rails, right one, like I said, needs a few patches. Left one's pretty good. The cross member there for the shocks is actually not bad. But we're going to have to get to work and cut out some sheet metal. I guess that makes the decision quite a bit easier to just rip everything out and completely start from scratch. I did have at least one nice surprise waiting for me. When I pulled out the rear seat, I got a near immaculate broadcast sheet. Most of the time, the mice have gotten to these and there's almost nothing left. And now you've seen the good, the bad, and the ugly about this 71 CUDA. I have a tendency in my projects to let them snowball and get really out of control. I've got a 70 Cuda that I'm 15 years into. My 68 Roadrunner took me about 10 years to finish. And I have several others that are really, really long in the tooth. I think this is gonna be a really unique build. We're gonna do it on a budget. I don't have the money to refinish this car. Some of you are gonna hate that, but please bear with us. I think it's gonna be cooler to see this car on the road than just another trailer queen that's gonna go from car show to car show. Someday, this 1971 Cuda will get a full restoration, but for now, we're gonna have some fun and we're gonna do it on a budget.